In today's episode, I will dive deep into healing the generational and ancestral trauma of the feminine. In a way you've most likely never heard about it before. In a way that allows you to understand this at the deepest level, but not just understand, also how you can practically heal it, what steps you need to take. And this episode is not just for women. For the men listening, you will learn how to support the feminine in the most aligned way possible in her journey of healing her generational and ancestral trauma. This episode is going to go very deep and this topic is very, very intense. Everything that arises is welcome and I invite you to listen with an open heart and an open mind. My name is Lorin Kren and I'm a coach, author and hypnotherapist. I help you to understand masculine and feminine dynamics. The generational trauma of the feminine goes back a long time. It has been documented by native tribes that there was a time where the feminine was deeply revered and deeply honored. But then something happened all across the globe where almost all big religions started to suppress the feminine. One way how they showed up was by passages of speaking of the holy woman or the divine feminine being removed and replaced with solely the holy man. Man was placed above woman and was placed before God, before spirit, before the universe, before the highest, before the divine, whatever label resonates most with you. Woman, man, spirit. And this has caused so much pain, so much suppression and so much suffering. Now, I'm going to spare you with the details of what exactly was written about women and why did that happen. All of that might be important, but the biggest relevance is how you can heal that. So I'm not going to stay here too long, but to give you some other pointers, you had specific periods such as the witch hunts, for instance, that caused immense generational trauma and suffering for women. In that time, a woman who was spiritually connected, for instance, or knew how to utilize the power of healing plants, a medicine woman, a shaman, would often be burned, tortured, or killed in a horrendous way. And it wasn't just she wasn't just killed by men. There were also other women who, when they felt jealousy towards another woman, they went to the authority or the police or whatever it was at that time to um, say that this woman, that they felt so jealous about triggered their own shadow and their own misery. And they basically said, this woman is a witch. So that suppression, even though it came from the masculine shadow, this suppression also occurred from the feminine in other subtle ways. And it still occurs in today's world, where, for instance, mothers tell their daughter to not expect much from men, that men are just the way they are, and they only have to be pretty and have to be quiet and have to basically just say yes to what men desire. This is how this incredibly deep generational trauma is still showing up in today's world. And I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not shaming anyone. I'm merely pointing out how this shows up. But it wasn't just the witch hunts. There were so many other things that led to so much collective trauma for the feminine. For instance, in periods of wars, part of the war strategy often was to rape women, to torture women, to keep women captive. And you see, the constant throughout history is that it left women in this almost chronic state of not feeling safe. Not feeling safe to embody all that she is, all her wisdom, all her intuition, all of her heart's truth. If you look into the research around generational trauma, Specifically, transgenerational trauma. Let me explain. To give one example in the book, The Ancestor Syndrome, Anne Arsalan Schützenberger, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm pronouncing Schützenberger correctly because I'm originally from Vienna, Austria. I was born there. But Arsalan, I think that's French. I think I'm pronouncing it wrongly. Either way, based on decades of transgenerational trauma, transgenerational means when something is passed down from generation to generation without being passed down through genetic inheritance. So it's almost like an energetic inheritance or an inheritance through the subconscious mind. No one knows really about these other theories. And 
what is inherited for the subconscious, generation for generation. Fears, worries, pains, energetic blockages. For instance, many women experience a sense of blockage or a sense of tightening in the throat, which makes perfect sense because throughout history, it wasn't safe for women to fully speak their truth. It got women killed. And that fear of being killed for saying the wrong thing, that is passed down from generation to generation. What we need to understand is that, generate, that trauma does not disappear unless it is transformed. Please remember that trauma does not go anywhere. This energy is almost encapsulated and is passed down from generation to generation. It doesn't matter when it happened. It doesn't matter how many generations follow. The one thing that matters and can make a difference is when you break the cycle, when you heal, when you disidentify with it. More practical steps later on in this episode. But this is so crucial because we believe, okay, the witch hunts happened quite, a, quite some time ago. Now that wouldn't be an issue, but it is still an issue because that trauma has been passed down. Now, when I say these things, I want to emphasize not everything is trauma that we receive from our ancestors. Much of what we, what we receive from our ancestors are also incredible gifts. There is so much medicine and so much strength and resilience. So I'm not just saying this is all negative, no. But there is also a lot of trauma. And we are meant to be the cycle breaker. As we heal our trauma, we set our ancestors free in that, in that way as well. Either way, to stay practical, in the book, the answer to syndrome, Anne Arsela Schützenberg, <laughs> I keep pronouncing completely wrong, by the way, I think, she, she talks about that an anniversary syndrome. So basically, she would be able to create a family tree and it, there were families where the same thing at the same date every year would happen. Things such as a, a little child dying at the age of three through drowning. And that would pass down from generation, generation, generation. And because something happened during a war, for instance, this is not a literal example, but many examples very similar to this. Then later it was found out the great, great, great grandfather or lost his child at the, when the child was free in a war, for instance. And this is absolutely crazy to hear these things for the first time. And you're like, whoa, how can that be? But if you look deeper into how trauma is being passed down, it makes sense that this is happening. But I didn't know how accurate this actually is, or accurate, no, accurate is the wrong word, how precise this can be. The same thing happening from generation to generation. It's truly crazy. And then it makes perfect sense why the feminine, why you as a woman or as a feminine identified being, why you are carrying this trauma inside you. It continues to live through you unless you break the cycle. And you're the one with whom it is meant to end. How does it manifest? Trauma is stored in the body. That's what we know. That's why somatic healing is the most important healing approach. Because trauma is stored in the body. So what do women experience? A blockage, a tightening in the throat chakra. A tightening and contraction in the heart chakra. Or in the sacral chakra. Throat, speaking your heart's truth. That could have led to death. Not safe. Heart, embodying your intuition, trusting your deeper feminine wisdom, not safe. Sacral chakra, the shaming of woman's sensuality, of woman's sexuality. All this is manifesting through the body. And of course, there are things in this life as well. But my personal take is that things in this life are only exacerbating or exaggerating the already exist existing generational trauma. Now, in relationship with men, how does it show up? Not trusting the masculine. This deep-rooted distrust in men. And it makes sense why he is there. Afraid to speak your truth, to voice your needs, to set healthy boundaries out of the fear of risking to lose connection with the masculine. Or the other way, overly criticizing men and thereby sabotaging your relationship with men, reaffirming this belief that men are not conscious enough, men can't meet your needs, you're not good enough to be in a healthy relationship, whatever the limiting belief is. So let's talk about how men, how you as a man can support the feminine and how you as the feminine 
can receive that deep support. And then I will talk about how you, as a woman of feminine identified being, the most important step you need to take in order to break free from that generational trauma. Now, the most important thing in relationship now, in today's world, is the importance of men not invalidating a woman's feelings. And this often happens accidentally. So the suppression of the feminine that's been going on for so many years throughout history is still manifesting now in relationships, in subtle ways. For instance, when a man gets very defensive or is trying to prove a woman that she's not right, the message that comes across for the woman is that her feelings are not validated. They are not welcome. So even though it's usually not the intention or almost never the intention of a man to suppress the feminine, what's happening here is that that trauma keeps manifesting. And as a woman, you feel that your emotions are invalidated. Hence why there is so much anger, why there is so much anger. For some of you, that's numbed out, that suppressed that anger. Total pleasing tendencies. For others of you, it will be so strong that it's sabotaging your relationship with men. But it's that do not invalidate my emotions. And yet at the same time, often the defensiveness or any behavior has nothing to do with us actually wanting to invalidate your emotions. It's that our own trauma is invalidating your emotions. So the most powerful way how we as men can support the feminine is by making sure we're not invalidating her feelings and emotions. And all of her is welcome in the relationship because then it's the polar opposite of the generational trauma, of the pain that has occurred throughout history, where it wasn't safe to be a woman, to embody all that a woman is. And if a man creates that level of safety in a relationship, where a woman can be all that she is, then that is the most potent way how the man can support the woman in her unique journey of healing her generational trauma. But of course, the woman needs to be open to receive that. Because if there's so many limiting beliefs in such a strong, wounded relationship with men, first of all, it's challenging then to be in a relationship with a conscious man because he will sense this. And the other thing is, it might be very difficult to receive that. So it's a two-way street in that sense. Now, let me give some practical examples. The woman is pointing out something where, for instance, a man was not fulfilling his promise or wasn't present or an unconscious pattern. When the man then tries with all its power and might to try to prove her that she is wrong and that this is not what's actually happening, he's unconsciously invalidating her feelings and therefore making her feel that not all of her is welcome. So in that moment to just validate her feelings and to be present with her, which is true spiritual warriorship, to be able to say, I hear you, I understand why, I understand why you're angry. And to just be with that without having to say so much, but just feel into that. I understand why you're angry, but really understanding it, right? I'm getting emotional because that's an emotional experience. Deeply, perhaps the deepest emotional, loving, safest experience that a couple can experience. Now, what can you as a woman do to no longer identify, and this is the key thing, with the generational trauma? Now, of course, this is a deeper journey. It's not a one-time thing. Hence why this is always a topic in my women's groups or the women's programs I host. But here I want to give you the following framework. In shamanism and in other traditions, there is a heavy emphasis and also in the book The Ancestor Syndrome, which is very interesting, very powerful research. It really blew my mind to read that book. The importance and emphasis on not identifying with the trauma of your family, but also of your ancestors, but of your family is ultimately your ancestors because that's where you see it manifested the most of the practical and in an alive way, so to speak, not identifying with that. What do I mean by that? In the book, The Ancestor Syndrome, Anne describes the process of that we identify ourselves unconsciously with a specific family member or a past family member that we don't even know about. This happens all the time. Until, unless we heal and disidentify, we are the continuum of generational trauma. So, I'll give you an example. A person who never works on themselves will eventually take on unconscious guilt, pain, worries, fears of a family member or of an ancestor from before. 
you might have experienced this when you look at your own family or someone else's family and someone is almost the direct replica of someone else. No, you don't always know if the other person is no longer alive, but if they are, it's quite incredible. Once you open your eyes to this, what you will see. For example, the daughter carries the guilt of her mother. The son carries the guilt of his father. A daughter feels like she needs to sacrifice herself for others because that is what her mother always did. That what, that's what her mother's mother did and all the women before. This idea of I need to sacrifice myself in order to be loved. And it's extremely important that you, in order for you to reclaim your power, you need to stop this identification. And how do you stop it? That is a conscious choice you make again and again inside yourself. So the more conscious and aware you become, the more you start to notice when your energy shifts there. What do I mean? You might have felt before that you felt you've got a fear or worries or guilt or pain that does not feel like yours because it isn't yours. It's generational and ancestral trauma. Much of the pain, the guilt, the anxieties we carry have nothing to do with us. They come from the past, such as just like many of our strengths come from the past. So you can snap out of it. You can consciously just remind yourself, I am not this person. I am not my mother. I am not my father. I am not this or that, specifically when you can pinpoint it. And by doing that and reminding yourself out of, out of that, you are literally reclaiming your power. You are saying, I am no longer the continuum of the generational trauma. And that's what it means to reclaim your authentic power. Because until you do that, you can never really fully be yourself. Because all these things are still going on there. Now, of course, there is so much more to this. And I go into this in my women's programs. But I wanted to keep this episode short and succinct in order to make this as practical as possible. So as men, the most important thing, how we men can support you, is by not invalidating your emotions. When all of you is welcome, that's when you can thrive and heal in a relationship that can support you incredibly. And the other most important step is to disidentify with the trauma of the women before you because it is not you. And the more you disidentify, the more you reclaim your true power, your authentic power. You feel happier, more vital, more fulfilled, more energized because you're no longer carrying the mountains of the past. There is a deep sense of lightness. And in that lightness, you can create so much more easily. You can share your heart's medicine, your truth with the world so much easier. Everything starts to flow in such a beautiful and divine way. Our work is to end the cycle of trauma. And the first step is to say and to remind ourselves again and again, this is not who I am. Thank you for listening to this episode. I am so grateful to have you here and to be of service on your path. If you've enjoyed this episode, for me to continue to support you at the highest level, it would mean the world to me if you give me a few seconds of your time to support the show. 30 seconds of your time, or less actually, a few seconds, to rate the show five stars or give it a thumbs up if you're watching it on YouTube. That goes a long way and just takes a few seconds. 30 seconds of your time to leave a short review or a comment if you're watching this on YouTube, just to describe your experience in one or two or three sentences that you have with this show. And of course, if you share it on your social medias or with someone whom you think can deeply benefit from this, these things go a long way and allow me and my team to serve you at a deeper and more powerful way. If you want to benefit from other free offerings, I've got a newsletter that I send out every single Friday. It's really, really powerful, a lot of value. Also, personal stories of my own life are in there. Every Friday, we send out an email. In the, click on the show notes, or you can just visit lorinkren.com slash newsletter. I've got also free ebooks. You can just type in lorinkren.com slash books, or you can click on my show notes. I've got an Awakened Feminine ebook, an Awakened Masculine ebook, and more. Once again, thank you so much for being here. I'm deeply, deeply honored to be of service.